Hey guys, today we're gonna cover some accounting. Ooh. My name is Mike Taylor, AKA Battleship Cobra. If you want one of these cool stickers, go to battleshipcobra.com and sign up for my newsletter. I'm also gonna be doing some live Q and A sessions. Go to live.battleshipcobra.com for a list of those sessions. Basically it'll be a two hour long session. You guys submit the questions and the highest voted questions, I will answer them. And if you sign up for the session, you'll get a recording of it. So live.battleshipcobra.com. Today we're gonna cover a topic that's very important and comes up very commonly. It's not a very sexy topic, but it's something that you should understand and it's something that you will have to deal with as a consultant or as a customer. It's really good to understand. So let's jump into the system and take a closer look. Okay, so first thing I wanna show you is how a normal item could possibly be set up. So we're gonna go here and I'm just gonna call this messed up, messed up item. I have item groups already set up, so I'm gonna go monitors, da 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 da, -da yes. So this is most commonly going to affect people that do their GL account determination by item group. Obviously, if you don't do it by item group, you do it exclusively by warehouse, this won't affect you. And in some cases, if you have advanced GL account determinations, this will not affect you. But likely, I would say 95% of my customers are using some form of item group GL account determination. So the thing to keep in mind here is if you only have one inventory account, this won't affect you either. So you don't need to worry about it. But if you have multiple inventory accounts, and a lot of people like to have that inventory by item class. So if you're moving between item classes, which means you're moving between GL account determination, uh, GL accounts, then that is where you're gonna be affected. If you have only maybe two broad inventory accounts and you're moving the item group between those GL account determinations, this won't affect you, okay? So understanding how your GL account determinations work will really help you. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So once you've set up your messed up item or whatever item you have, you can click on this golden arrow which drills down to the item group set up below the item group. This is not the setting for only this item. This is a setting for every item linked to the, mon uh, the monitor's item group. Two things you wanna see are inventory account and sales returns account. These need to be the inventory account that you are going to use for this item class. You do not want them to be separate and you do not wanna have inventory in any other one of these classifications. It will not work properly and it will not do what you want properly. These are the only two that need to go to that inventory account and they need to be the same. I, again, I guess if you don't care about breaking up your, like generally the whole point of this is so your inventory audit report will match your balance sheet and I will show you how to run your inventory audit report and to see how this will be affecting it. But for now, you just need to know this, inventory, inventory. So I'm gonna use this and switch between this one and the networking one, the networking one will have just inventory raw material, inventory raw material. So I'm gonna simulate bringing this into monitors, having somebody mistakenly switch it, and then that's what's gonna cause the error. But first I'll show you the good way to do it. So we're just gonna add this guy, add. We're gonna to go to a goods receipt, inventory, inventory transaction. You can do this, obviously this would come from purchasing or whatever, I'm just using the goods receipt just as a, an example. So when you're receiving it, this, I'm just gonna receive 100 at $1. And you can go and click your journal entry preview just to see how this is gonna go. So you see it's gonna increase your inventory GL account. So I'm gonna add this. Um, normally you're gonna to wanna to put uh, like what you're doing. So I'm just not gonna put that, but you do wanna kind of note what you're doing in the remarks of what you are uh, working on just in case you have to go back and look at it, you have no clue what you were doing. So it's really smart. I always put my initials and then I put what I'm doing. Just in case I look back, it's a lot easier to decipher what the heck was going on, especially with more than one person in your mark, uh, accounting department. Add. Okay, so I added it here, refresh. So I'm gonna go and run my inventory audit report. Do, 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 do. Uh, posting date. 
clear this out and I'm going to put mest, mest. And then I'm going to summarize by accounts in this one because I want to see. So this is what we want to see here. One account with the whole value, okay? So what if you want to switch this so you, you, know, you made a mistake but this actually needs to go to the inventory raw materials or to some other GL account? So what you want to do is clear out the 100. You're going to use a goods issue to issue it out. Change the item group and then goods receipt it back. So I'm going to temporarily use a goods issue to set it to an offset, like a contra offset account that's just temporary. And then I'm going to bring that value back. So it's going to go out for a second, switch, come back in. So let's see how we're going to do that. So it's going to be done through goods issues. If you do have cereals or you have batches, I'm not addressing that in this particular video. Uh, the solution is basically that, yes, you have to issue them out manually and then you have to receive them manually. Um, you can do this through the DGW. I'm not going to cover that in this particular video, but I plan to do a video on doing it by the DTW. I also plan to do an automatic DIAPI switching mechanism. Um, but I have to mess around with that a little bit and then you can just one click it and it'll just put it out, change it and then turn it back. So uh, eventually I'll do those things, but for right now we're just looking at kind of the scenario. So the goods issue, I'm going to issue out all 100. So this is going to go to this temporary in, uh, inventory offset decrease account. So this is just going to go to a temporary co uh, variance account and then it'll be cleared out. So you can click your... Uh, journal entry preview, we know it's 100 at 1. Um, you can go here and it's $1 item cost. So you want to issue it out, out at the same amount um, that you're going to bring it back in. So you can record that, write it down, depending on the scope of how many uh, items you have to do. I'm just going to add this. Again, I just want to talk about this scenario. I don't want to get bogged down too much in the details. Okay, so it's gone. <clears throat> so now we come back and switch the item group to networking. Push yes. Make sure you push update. Same. Remember that the goods issue, you don't have control over the value that it is being issued out at. It has to be issued out at the book value in order to clear that inventory account value. So you can look in inventory and this would be $1. So we already knew what it was. That's what it has to issue out. On the receipt, you do need to very specifically match how, uh, what it was issued out at. So remember, modules, inventory, inventory, transactions, goods, receipt. So we're going to go mess. Now we're going to bring them in at 100 for $1 because we knew what that was. Extremely simple. Um, just remember, if you have cereals or batches, you're going to have to fill those out too at this point. Go here. And now we can see it's properly putting the $100 into the new account. So I'll add that. Okay, refresh. We got 100 so now we go modules, inventory, inventory reports, inventory auto report, run this summarizing by. So now we have two, but this should be 100 in raw materials and zero in the previous one. So this is correct. 100% of our value is in um, this other one. So I want to show you now what's going to happen if you think you're changing it to the new GL account but you make a mistake. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna switch networking to monitors. We're gonna update it and push update here. This kind of sort of hurts my heart, but I actually, uh, this I know is gonna cause issues. So I'm kind of like, Ugh. feels bad. You should do it the proper way, but this happens. It, it, you, know, you, you can isolate things down where your audit report doesn't match your general ledger, and this could be why. I have another video on that actually, how to match your audit report to your balance sheet. So go and check that out too. So I checked, I changed it to monitors. Now the problem is somebody's, you know, they say, oh shoot, I made a mistake on this item. I needed to just change the item group. They didn't know that the GL account determination is being run off of it and they go and make that change. So now when they go to do a delivery, make it to myself, send myself a messed up item. And I will ship 10, whatever, it's a dollar for revenue. Um, now I can go and check out my journal entry preview and look what happens here. So it's going to credit out the inventory account that is set up as of right now. So let's add this and view it. 
Okay, so it's back. Let's run the inventory audit report by account. And you'll see now the total is right. You have 90 left at a dollar each, but your GL accounts are now incorrect, right? So if you do intend to have this stay with the regular inventory account, you need to fix this situation because your GL account determinations have caused your general ledger to be incorrect and it will maybe, maybe not match what your balance sheet says and this can cause a big issue here. So first what I'm gonna do is increase, take this 100 and move this 100 up to the GL account I want and then after I've moved that up to the one I want, I'm gonna go decrease the one that I don't want. So you always, you always want to increase the one you want and then decrease the one you don't want. Basically the end result, it won't change, you won't lose any value. I'm just gonna temporarily add 100 and then I'm gonna remove 100 just to use a Contra account to move the values around to properly have it match in your inventory audit report. Okay, so how do you do that? Modules, inventory, inventory, uh, inventory transactions, inventory revaluation, inventory, debit, and credit. Pick our messed up items. So we're gonna do, this doesn't even matter. I don't even, it makes you choose a quantity, but it doesn't make a difference. So I'm gonna add 100 to the new account for what it's set on, which should be just inventory. So you can see it's gonna add 100 to it, which is great. So let's add that. Go back to here, run our inventory audit report again. So that's what it should be, 90. So then I'm gonna take that 100 and I'm gonna credit out the 100 to remove it from the old GL account. How do you do that? So what you need to do then is temporarily switch that item back to the old way of doing, sorry, the old inventory account temporarily. So I'm gonna set that back to networking, modules, inventory, inventory transactions, inventory evaluation, inventory debit credit, mess, one, doesn't matter, it has to be, made, it doesn't seem to make any difference and then negative 100, okay? So it's gonna credit it. So it's gonna take the credit out of raw materials, so now this is gonna be reduced, and then it's going to offset that with the 100 we already did for the other account from the variance account. So it will net to zero. So that's all good. Add this, go back to your item, and set it back to the one that you want to have it on, push update. And now you can run your inventory audit report again, and you know what you should have is exactly what you have left, 90, and your inventory accounts are clean and clear. So if you look in here, boom, you have 90 at a dollar, and um, on your inventory audit report, everything matches that. So your general ledger matches up with your inventory accounts, your, um, if you go to run, your balance sheet, it will match your inventory audit report. If it doesn't, again, see my video for matching the balance sheet and the audit report, but this could be part of what the issue is. And a lot of the, uh, a lot of the issues around this are, uh, is because SAP won't do inventory accounts as control accounts. If they treated it like control accounts, um, I think it would be better, but I acknowledge too that some jurisdictions and some uh, like businesses don't do it this way, but the majority of customers I work with in North America need to be able to produce a detailed report that shows the quantity and the cost per item in a particular inventory account. They wanna see that where it matches to the penny. And you can do that using the inventory audit report and your regular balance sheet. You just have to make sure you follow um, all these tips and tricks and make sure everything is set up uh, nice and clean. So that was, you know, not really that sexy of a conversation, but it's a very, very common uh, question that I get and something that I needed to show a video for. So if somebody asks me, um, they can have a nice reference on the who, what's, when's, and why's of that whole situation. If you want a sticker 
totally for free, go to battleshipcobra.com and sign up for my newsletter. Also, don't forget to check out live.battleshipcobra.com for my upcoming Q&A sessions. I have one coming up that's two hours. Check it out. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you guys so much as usual for watching my videos. Bye for now. Make some progress, I can see that they compare I think everyone's against me, maybe